Last week, and in the opener for this week, you were introduced to a number of different attributes of linear systems and or matrices. And let's go through these more systematically. So here is the list. And let's just go through this list using the example from the last unit. Notice that in the last unit, you started with a linear system with three equations in four unknowns. You then wrote that as an appended system, and you then transformed that into row echelon form. And in this particular case, the last row ends up simply becoming zero is equal to zero. And therefore, we really, for all practical purposes, end up with two equations in four unknowns. Now let's go through all of these attributes one by one using this as an example. So the first thing is the row echelon form of the system, and that's given by this. The next thing you will want to do is identify the pivots. And the pivots, uh, our convention is that it's the first non-zero in each of the rows, starting from the left. So these two are the pivots. Once you've identified the pivots, you can identify the free variables. They are the variables associated with the columns in which there are no pivots. So in this case, the free variables are chi1 and chi3. Once you know the free variables, you can identify the dependent variables. You can either say, well, there are the variables that are not free variables, or you can say they are the variables associated with the columns in which there are pivots. So that's chi0 and chi2. Now we would like to identify a specific solution. The most straightforward way to find a specific solution is to set the free variables equal to zero and to then solve for the remaining variables, the dependent variables. If you set the free variables to zero here, then this goes away and that goes away, and you end up with the system chi zero plus chi two equal to one, and two times chi two is equal to one. And if you work that out, you find that chi2 is one half and chi0 is one half. And that then becomes a specific solution. We then would like to find a basis for the null space, because once we have a basis for the null space, we can describe all solutions to the linear system. And to do that, we set the right-hand side to zero, and we set the free variables to one or zero, to find the first vector, you set the first free variable to one and the second free variable to zero. And uh, to find the second vector, you set the first free variable to zero and the second one to one. For every free variable, you can find a vector in the null space this way. The general solution is then given by taking the specific solution, which in this case was one half, one half there. And then whatever you computed for your vectors in the null space, and any specific solution plus a linear combination of the vectors that are a basis for the null space gives you a description of all vectors that satisfy the linear system. How do we find a basis for the column space? Well, we know that the column space has dimension equal to the number of dependent variables. And the way you find a basis for the column space is you look for where the pivots are, and you pick out the columns in the original matrix associated with the columns in which eventually the pivots appear. We saw that there was something called the row space, and the row space you find by taking the vectors from the row echelon form in which there are pivots and putting those on their side so that they become column vectors. Don't leave them as row vectors because the row space has a basis that consists of column vectors. These two vectors are a basis for the row space. Next, the dimension of the row space, the dimension of the column space, and the rank of the matrix all equal the number of pivots that you have. If there are k pivots, then all of these equal k. In this particular case, k equals 2. The dimension of the null space is equal to the number of columns minus the number of pivots. So this is always equal to n, the number of columns in the matrix, minus k, the number of pivots. 
Now, in this particular case, that also equals to 2, but that's by coincidence. Those are all the important attributes. You can rest assured that you will be asked about these in some homework exercises and also on the final.